Hello, and welcome to the People's Third Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of January 24th, 2021. I apologize to the viewers in advance for my absentee yesterday. I was unexpectedly delayed. But as for today, I actually have information for you that you might find useful. Meaning, for instance, we found out that today Chuck Schumer actually had a press conference where he outlined the three main priorities of for the next three weeks to the prayer. To the press. His first priority was he disarmed his mask in the face. His first priority was is to do the basic um, trial of Donald Trump. His second priority is to boldly and strongly take care of his COVID relief package. And by that he means to approve or to at least try to get the one point nine trillion dollars to his package approved. That was Biden's idea. His third one is is appearing uh, approving the president's cabinet and other nominee. He said that the Senate must pass these three, this, these bill, these three things in the next three weeks because the stakes are too high and to delay, they can't delay them any further. On the article of impeachment, they, they were going to re start reading them tomorrow at 7 a.m. On Tuesday, members of Congress will be sworn in for the trial during the swearing in at that time, the Senate will be able to do two different, be able to do two of the world. So I can't really speak right now. They'll be able to do two, two separate things. Which means they'll be able to take care of the tennis proposal as well as approving the President's cabinet and other nominee members. In fact, this, they, they'll, they'll, they're going to approve the uh, President's key appointments as well as nominees, and to advance the COVID relief bill in a bold and strong way. And he's been using that word a lot because I, because he wants. I guess he's trying to you know emphasize how much important this bill is. But sticking with the stimulus and dealing with uh, uh, perennial issues with Republicans, a reporter asked Schumer a very good question. And in fact, you know what? I think I'll let him ask the question and sure answer for you. So here's a clip. I will be right back. Majority of the That's it. Next. Thank you, Majority Will President Joe Biden revise his COVID-19 relief plan monetary-wise to attempt to work with Republicans on cost concerns and also the Trump alleged plot to remove the Attorney General? You called for an investigation. So I wanted to ask you if you may comment on the status of that investigation. Yes. Okay. Two things. First. The number one need for America is for bold, strong relief. We have the greatest economic crisis we've had in 75 years since the Great Depression. We've had the greatest um, health care crisis in 100 years since the Spanish pandemic flu uh, wreaked havoc across the globe 100 years ago, a century ago. And so we need a big, bold plan. We hope the Republicans will join us in that. Now, some of the remarks from some of the Republican leaders has not been very positive. But there's a meeting today at the White House, and, and I am hopeful that Republicans will see the need. But if they don't, there are tools we can use to move forward on our own, and we will, because the number one goal is a bold package that meets the needs of the American people. Back in 2008, uh, the, the our era was whittled down, and the recovery took a decade. We cannot go through that again. And as you heard, Schumer didn't say the Democrats were willing to actually go down on the Senate's package. Instead, he said that they need to stay on the big Senate's proposal of $1.9 trillion. Biden signed two executive orders into law. The first was to increase the SNAP benefits program, in other words, on food stamps, because apparently 40% of recipients of SNAP did not get the improved benefits that were signed in when President Trump. When Former Trump, when Trump was president, when he signed it in, 40% of those people did not get this. So, this new executive order will help us so those four people get that enhanced SNAP program benefits for themselves, which is a good thing. And then he also signed in a federal minimum wage of $16 an hour, but for only federal employees. Not for state employees, not for regular employees like me and you. But only for federal employees. I don't know. I mean, I guess to get the, the national minimum wage of $15 an hour, he has to go through Congress and get the House and the Senate to pass it. 
And I see if they can if they can do that, that'd be great because it's always been at 725 to 750 an hour. We are now in 2021. It's time for some change. And that change is to take the new national minimum wage up to $15 an hour so people may survive. Because that's what it's all about. And even $15 an hour may or may not help people survive. I don't know yet. I mean, it depends on, you know, all the businesses out there. Republicans are saying that taking the 50, up to $15 an hour is going to hurt the small businesses. And my policy on this is, you know what? If you're not prepared to pay $15 an hour, and that is the current national uh, federal minimum wage, then maybe you should plan a bit harder. Because the people are worth $15 an hour, if not more, to start. Turns out, a on a different topic, it turns out a uh, doctor from Texas is facing a $4,000 fine, plus up to one year in prison, for stealing nine doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. In his defense, he says that the vial that the doses were in was cracked and broken, so that's why he administered it to his friends and family. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.